All right, so I'm outside of a 2019 Honda Civic. This is the hatchback. This is an EX version. It's white, and you notice it has the black and ivory interior, and I'll get to that in a second. I always like to start at the back of the car and just kind of show you what's going on from there. Uh, so you can see from here uh, the hatch setup. It's got this, the wing across the back. It matches up with the lights and everything. Uh, so that's what's going on from that standpoint. So let's pop it open and take a look inside and show you some more. All right, so when you get the hatch pulled open, I'll show you a couple things. It does have a privacy setter here, and then I can pull this across and set this here also. Um, so I've got a couple different ways to protect anybody from seeing what's in the back of my car. Right now, the seats are folded down in this one, so you can see what's going on from that standpoint. My carpeted floor mats that come with the car. So this way you can get a, an idea for spacing in the back if you need to use it. Now, I do have my spare, which is right underneath here. It is a full diameter spare, so meaning full height, just not full width. So it's not like a donut where it's the tiny one, right? So that's what's going on from that standpoint. Let's throw these back in here, and we'll walk around to the side door. All right, so moving into the side door, actually, before I do that, I'll actually pause on this because I know sometimes a lot of people want to pause and read some of the stuff. So if you wanted to, there you go. Uh, so let's keep moving here. All right, so let me pop it open here again. So I guess it locked back on me. All right, so throwing the seats up. Let's get these up so you can take a look at what's going on from the inside of the car. All right, so you can see I've got the black and tan interior in the back here. Uh, in this model, uh, you don't have air vents or anything in the back, so just keep that in mind if you're looking for one because you're gonna have little bitty ones or something in the back. Keep that uh, conscious on your... You do have cup holders there. There are cup holders in all of the doors, additionally two. Uh, so know that you have a lot of spaces to put drinks and whatnot. The car does have keyless entry, so if it is locked, which I'll show you a couple things on the key here for a second, uh, locked right there. If I want to use a remote start on this car, you always press the lock button first, and then you'll press the remote start button right here. Let it hold it for a couple seconds, and then that'll crank the car on. So you can see the car just popped on. I can run it for additional uh, 10 additional minutes if I press the same uh, key entry again, so lock, and then press and hold that, right? So when I walk up to the car, so the door is locked right now. If I put my hand right here, it just unlocked for me. If I was walking away from the car, I could press the black button. Now it's locked. So that's how that function works. That's just smart key entry. So that's part of what comes on this car. Now, when you remote start this car, you'll notice right now that the car is on, but you'll notice not all the electronics of the vehicle are on. It's going to ask you to hop inside the car, and you're going to see to start it. Even though it's already started, it's going to ask you to put your foot on the brake, tap that start button. It's still running, but it's just going to crank everything else on. So that's how that works from this standpoint. So just so you know what's going on. All right, so let's turn the volume down here, and we'll go through a couple features for you here. Let me scoot the steering wheel down some too. So, on the left side, I'm gonna start you and walk you through a couple things. You got your window controls, auto up down on your driver and passenger side. My mirror, uh, excuse me, my window locks, my door locks, and then my mirror controls left and right, and then my pad here to adjust. Uh, when you move up onto the dash, I'll show you a couple things. You can see right here, so this is road departure mitigation. If I drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and then it'll shake the wheel. You can tell if this is on because that LED is going to be on or off. Plus, whenever I hit it, you'll see that warning sign to let me know it's on or off. So that's what's going on from that standpoint. Moving above that is collision mitigation braking. So this is always on unless I press and hold this button. And to turn it off, I'll show you. I press it. It took that long for it to turn off. I had to keep it pressed. Uh, and you can see now I have that orange in, 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 or excuse me, that orange icon up at the top of the screen. That's letting me know it's off. I press it again, gotta hold it. Now it's on, right? What that is, is if I um, don't apply the brakes and it's looking like I'm getting into an accident, it'll actually apply the brakes for me and then it will uh, try to prevent the accident. So first it'll give me an audible alert and flash in the dash and then it'll actually apply the brakes. So that's what this function is. Uh, right here, this vehicle stability assist works with my traction control. So if I go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever uh, wheel has better traction to help correct that skid. Same thing, I gotta press and hold this one to turn off. It's always running. Only time you wanna turn that off is if you're stuck in the mud and wanted to spin your tires where you're trying to push yourself out, that kind of thing. So moving up onto the steering wheel. I'll start you on the left side. Your Bluetooth controls are right here. So to answer a phone call, to hang up, uh, to use voice command, press this and say call so and so, that sort of thing. This also works with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if I have either one of those pulled up, I can press and hold till I hear the beat for Siri and then ask Siri to do stuff. Siri send a text to this person. Siri pull up navigation directions to this, you know, that sort of thing. Same thing with OK Google. Uh, so that's what this really works for. Now the I button above this is going to be my menu screen. So whenever I push this, you're actually going to see these menus pop up and it'll toggle through. Uh, so whether I want to see, hey, you know, drive modes and things like that. If I want to jump over and see what my oil life is. Uh, if I want to jump over and see what audio that I have pulled up and running. So you can see I have sex, uh, Sirius XM pulled up right now. 
uh, jumping over to my Bluetooth, switching to kilometers an hour. So that's what this is. And that's using this I button right here. So if I have like my audio running, so I'm gonna enter that menu. If I press up or down on this screen, it's gonna jump between any of my audio options. So I can jump over to AM, I can jump to FM, uh, back to Sirius XM, because that's all I have hooked up. If I had the USB connected or Bluetooth running or anything else, it would give me those options to jump over to those two. So that's what the up and down arrows can do. Jumping left and right, so this could jump between stations, it can jump between favorites. So right now you can see it's jumping over on my favorites. You can see it jumping from one to two to three to four. That's what this does, the left and right arrows. And then if I'm in any menu screen, I can use up and down in the arrows to, to uh, toggle through the menus. My plus and minus right here are my volume control, so pretty self-explanatory from that standpoint. Uh, you do have a volume knob on this car too, so I will point that out because I know that was a point of contention in a lot of reviews in previous uh, years. So just so you know what's going on there. Now moving back over here, I'll show you, you do have auto on-off headlights. You can set them right there, and then I can control my fog lights right here. On the tip of this blinker stock, you're going to see a button right here. That button right there is a, a camera that it will turn on and off. So the way this car is set up right now, if I turn my right blinker on, it's going to fire on a camera that runs down the, the right side of my car. This is called Honda Lane Watch. It's designed to set up to where if I'm like exiting the highway or doing anything like that, I don't have to look over my shoulder away from the road uh, that's facing, that you know, that's in front of me so that I can see who's there to tell if I can, you know, merge with traffic and things like that. So this is actually, if I can get that far over, you can see it right at the edge of my mirror. You can see something sticking out. That's where that camera is. So it runs down the front of the, or the side of the car. You can see red line is the end of my car length. Uh, in my car, orange is a car link from red, and then orange to orange would be a secondary car link if I'm on the highway. So that's how this works. I don't have to hit my blinker to turn that button on. In fact, I can turn it off to where the blinker doesn't turn it on. Uh, I can also use the button on the tip of the blinker stock. So if I press that, whenever I touch it, now it's on. I have to press it again, and it turns it off. So that's what that is. So cool feature. Hopefully you check it out. Uh, on the other side is going to be my uh, windshield wiper controls. I pull it down. It does my fronts. Uh, if I want to do the backs... I'll do the uh, the small deal and it'll throw the backs on. Uh, so that's how that works. All right, so on the right side of the steering wheel, some additional Honda sensing stuff. So uh, if I hit the main button, which the main button was already pressed uh, before I got in this car, so it is still on. So it'll keep running. So if I leave it on, the next time I turn the car on, it'll be on again. The way to tell if it's on is you'll see ACC and LKS up here in the top right area. Uh, and you can see them right there. Adaptive cruise control is ACC, LKS is lane keep assist. So let's start you with lane keep assist first. This is lane keep assist. When I press this, you'll see these dotted lines appear. So you can see them flashing at me right now. Uh, if you were going over 45 miles an hour and your windshield wipers are not on, this will actively engage. It uses a camera that is actually up in this black box right here by the mirror. Uh, and it, it, it looks for the lines on the road. When it sees them, uh, you will see the boxes filling solid on those dotted lines right now, right? When they're filled in solid, it means it's actively doing the road. So if you start to drift, it'll correct the steering wheel a little bit to the left or the right for you. So that's how this function works. If you have your windshield wipers on, they're assuming it's raining out and they want you to be safe. So they really want you to focus on holding the wheel and paying attention. Now, the other one, is going to be my uh, cruise control. So adaptive cruise control is set up to where once I get to speed, I press set, that'll hold the speed, and then I can set the distance it'll keep between me and the car in front of me, regardless of their speed. If they keep slowing down to 50 and then back up to 70, my car will keep whatever distance I set, which is selected by these boxes. The more boxes, the more distance between me and the car in front of me. And so if they keep slowing down, my car will actually slow down and then speed back up once they do or once I get around them. So that way I don't have to turn cruise control on and off and all that jazz, right? So if I don't want to use the adaptive cruise control, I just want to go to regular cruise control. If I press and hold on that button, you'll see cruise, ma cruise mode pop up there. Now I can just use it as a standard cruise control. So that's how it works. And if I need to switch back, you press on that again. And I would switch back. It'll say ACC mode uh, selected. So that's how that works if you want to jump between the two. All of my Honda sensing features that I went over, you can turn on and off. So just so you know what's going on from there. All right. So you saw that it was a push button start. It's also remote start. I explained that earlier so you know what's going on from that standpoint. Let's move over to the touchscreen here. I'm going to turn off that light. Okay. So touchscreen related. Let's start you at the home page, right? Which now you have some buttons here that you can actually touch. So you can't see them that well in the dark, but they are there. Let me turn on the light again. You can see the ridges to them. So it's kind of nice if you're reaching over and you just want to feel for buttons, you absolutely can. So from your home screen, you can see a lot of different things. I'll start you at audio and we'll work from there. So from the audio button, I'm going to touch the source button. From there, you can see all the options you have for audio. So FM, AM, three months free of Sirius XM. I have USBs that I can plug into as far as uh, connecting to the car. Where those are, I'll show you. Uh, I've got one down low under here, which I don't think you're going to be able to see right now. And then I have one additionally down here. Uh, the one for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is actually going to be down there. Uh, you've got a USB plug and you also have a power lid on the other side. So I don't know if you can see from the other side. Nah, you can't. Uh, you're just going to have to trust me that they're there. 
uh, but that's how that works. I can connect an iPod, iPad, you fill in the eye blank. Uh, we'll connect it to the car. You can hook it up to the USB and play. Uh, if it has Bluetooth, you can access it that way. Uh, you can connect up to eight things to the vehicle uh, at, at, at any given time. Not Only one can obviously be connected at a time, but you can have them all paired to it. So that's how that works. Cars Pandora compatible, so you have that action you can go through. Uh, if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can use Spotify, Pandora, iHeartMedia. Uh, there's a lot of different options. So it just depends on what you want to do and how you want to do it. And then you can always use Bluetooth to connect up to any of these apps too. So if it was something streaming service, even if it's YouTube and you just want to be able to hear it, you can do it that way too. Uh, so that's what's going on from the audio standpoint on the car. Now moving down to the info button, there's going to be two different screens I want to show you here. The first one is just a general tripometer. So trip. It'll pull it up right here. How many miles I'm in this tank of gas, current and previous trips, and that sort of thing. I can get to that same info on the I button over here if I jump uh, over to my gas. Same info right there, right? So it just depends on where you want to see this info. So I'm going to back out of that screen. If I touch info again, I can jump over and do a clock and wallpaper. So if I just wanted to load up my own image, I connect up to the USB that you saw in a second ago that is down in there. Uh, I just put a thumb drive in. I can touch this. It'll see clock and wallpaper settings here uh, right there. And then I can I can go into the prompts and I add my own. Uh, so I would just select next. From here, I can turn that clock on and off, make it small, do different things from there. And then wallpaper, I would want to add new and then search for it. So that's how you do it if you want to mess with that. Uh, so there you go. That's how to hook up that. Honda Link. So Honda Link is set up to where it'll give you recall notices, maintenance reminders if you set up an account with them. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, additionally, moving forward, there's some other features that are available depending on the car and the trim level. Things like being able to control your door locks uh, from your phone, being able to start your car from your phone. So it just depends on which level of a car you end up being on, uh, on which car. But you can go to hondalink.com and you can check this out. So if you want to see what cars will offer what, you can check it out there. Uh, connecting up your phone, if it's the first time, you can hit that, the phone button, and it'll start the prompt for you. Let's say you need to connect up a second phone, just so you know how to do it, go to settings. From there, you're going to want Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. From there, you're going to want to go to the Bluetooth device list, because we want to add something to this list. Uh, and then down at the bottom, add a Bluetooth device. When you select that, I'll say, hey, uh, get ready, let's do this, we'll find your phone, and then you can go through the prompts that way. So that's just how to connect up a phone. Now, while I'm talking about settings, I want to show you a couple things. First, all the settings of the car are right here. You need to change the clock, bam, there you go. You want to turn the guidelines off on any of the cameras, you can do that right there. You want to connect up a phone, Bluetooth, right there, that's how you do it. Audio, you want to get to the equalizer, there you go. Vehicle settings, though, there's a couple here that I want you to know about. So if you want to mess with like your door controls, right now the way this car is set up, you're going to go to door and window, when you hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the doors. That's this very first one. And then you got some options you can change that to. Secondarily, when you get out of the car, when you open to the driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. This is where you can change those options if you want to mess with that. The last one I like to show people is the walkway auto lock feature. This is currently turned off in this car. I'm going to turn it on here. Uh, what that is, is if this is on, when I get outside of my car, if I have the key fob in my pocket, when I get outside of 10 feet, it'll automatically lock the doors. So if you're the kind of person who gets halfway into the grocery store and then goes, uh, crap, I don't know if I locked it, that's the feature for you. Uh, so just some general features I wanted you to see and where they're at. And there's lots of other stuff here you can play with, but those are kind of the, the top three that I show people just to let them know about it. Smartphone connection. So once I connect up to that USB that I was telling you is down there, um, this will light up and either say Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. If you have an Android-based phone, you're going to need to download the Android Auto app. So keep that in mind. When you plug it in, this will light up. It'll say one of the two. You can then select it, and you'll see the screen change. If you're an Apple user, it's going to look just like your phone. If you're an Android user, it's going to look a little bit different, but you're going to recognize a lot of the stuff, and all your button controls will be along the bottom and things like that. So it'll be easy for you to figure out. Uh, now, as far as AC controls, so on this car, you can see I have some buttons and knobs so I can affect the fan speed, and you'll see it pop up there. It'll show me what the temperatures are. Uh, this is dual climate control, so I can have them synced using the sync button here and then control them both from here. Uh, so that way you can see them changing, right? Or I can unsync them and then be able to change just one. So I'm going to sync them back since I'm the only one in the car. I'm going to turn the fan speed down. Now, if you want to pull up it on the touchscreen, you absolutely can. And then from here, I can see AC, where the air is going, all that stuff. But you don't necessarily have to do it that way. It's just two different ways to do the same thing. So that's what's going on from this standpoint. Uh, so that is how that works. All right, so moving away from that. Heated seats are down below, so I've got three different options. I've got a, a full power and then lower and lower. <coughs> Excuse me. Down underneath, you'll see there's a place where you can run your wires, uh, and they've actually got a plug right there you can hook your own USB up to. So that way, I don't have to have wires running all over the place to get to uh, my USB down there. I can have it nice and tucked away and put away clean. All right, so the shifter is right there. I want to show you a couple different features. The first one is brake hold, and then I'll show you the parking brake. So let's start with the parking brake just because I don't have my seatbelt on yet. Parking brake. To set it, I put down on the brake and then I lift up on the trigger. It says the parking brake. You'll see that come on and then you'll see brake over here and red over in the corner. To release it, 
I put my foot on the brake, I press down, it is now released. You can see the red LED went away. Pretty easy to understand, right? So, brake hold. If the car is in drive, if I can get in there with my left hand, uh, you'll see obviously drive there, and then you'll see the D right there. Uh, so, if brake hold is on, you'll see brake hold pop up on the screen there, and you'll see it over here in green right there, right? So, now the car is in drive, and brake hold is on, and I have my foot on the brake. If I let my foot off the brake, you'll notice I'm not moving. Uh, once I touch the gas pedal, it'll start to move forward. When I come to a complete stop again, I have my foot on the brake, it's still in drive. I let my foot off the brake, it holds it. So if you're in stop and go traffic anywhere, uh, this is a nice feature to not have to keep your foot pressed on the brake, then the gas, and the brake, then the gas. Uh, so just a convenience feature, it's there to help you out if you need it. If you're on, the, on a hill, you could use this feature also. The car is built with hill start assist to prevent that, but extra precaution, there you go. So that's what brake hold is in case you've never used it. Now, if you don't have your seatbelt on, this feature doesn't work, so keep that in mind. You see, it immediately, when I took my seatbelt off, it threw the emergency brake on. You can see that light come on. Emergency brake is now on. The car is still in drive. So it's designed not to just let you roll into the guy in front of you. So I'm going to slide this into reverse because I need to back up, throw this off. While I'm doing that, I'll show you the backup camera. Uh, so backup camera has three different views on it. I've got a wide-angle view. I've got just a standard backup camera, and then this one is aimed straight down. So you can see the edge of my back bumper right there. You can see a cement pole right there. You can see a car right there. So when I'm backing up, I can see exactly where I'm getting. And this is where this comes into play because I want to know how close I'm getting to that, right? So if I've got other views, it's kind of like, all right, well, I look okay. And then I can jump down and see exactly where I'm at. So that's the function of this camera. Uh, so I can jump off of that. So that's kind of the quick rundown of this car. Uh, Interior-wise, I'll flip it around and show you again. You can see it's the black and ivory interior going on here. Uh, this car does have a moonroof that you can use. Uh, the button controls are right up here. If you want to mess with it, you can send it all the way back. I won't do it all the way back. If you want to crack it, you just push up on that button, and then it'll crack it. So that's how that works. Uh, mirrors and you know your vanities and all that stuff, they're lit. So what I call normal new car stuff. If you have any questions about this car, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Comment on the YouTube video. You can always... Uh, shoot me a call, 512-443-4300, or you can email me, the letter J, and then my last name, Fuller, F-U-L-L-E-R, at howdyhonda.com. Thank you much.